This is Michael McKeon, a.k.a. Morris Fletcher, a.k.a. Chuck McGill. You know who I am. But it's time for Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. You're watching Inside the Gilliverse, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. Brought to you by the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. For all your favorite characters from the Gillivers, shop the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. Also brought to you by Rode Microphones, the official microphone supplier of Inside the Gillivers. See their entire lineup today at Rode.com. Now, please welcome your host, Eric Broadbent. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the season three premiere of Inside the Gillivers, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. My name is Eric Broadbent, and it comes with extreme pleasure to welcome back my dear good friend, writer, producer, director, uh, former co-host, and hopefully future co-host, super dad, great guitar player, Mr. Tom Schnauz. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Hey, you deserve every every bit of it, except for the um, the writer, producer, director, and all that stuff. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'll buddy. Super dad. I'll, I'll take Super Dad. Uh, super Dad for sure. Super Dad for the win. That's fantastic. It's great to have you back, and thank you for giving us uh, some of your time for the Gilbert. I know you're really, really busy. Um, there's a lot of people excited about what's happening right now. Everyone's back to work. Remember, just a while back, we were talking about can't wait to get back to work when it's all safe. Remember those conversations? I do. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, slowly, slowly clawing back, but you know, everything is, you know, I've got my mask right here. You know, everybody walks around the offices with the mask on and, and there's plastic hanging up and uh, you know, the onset COVID protocols are really strict, I mean, for good reason, but uh, you know, I, I'd love for it to go back like it was in season five, but you know, we're, everyone's doing what they can and, uh, and <clears throat> it's a pain in the butt, but everybody's, everybody's dealing with it. That's true. And I forget who our guest was um, when you were co-hosting with me. And I'm really looking forward to you coming back when you can. Um, I forget. It might have been Michael Mando. I don't know who it was. I think it might have been Michael. But someone who was on. And you were talking about how you didn't, like the, everyone involved in the show, didn't want to change how the show feels and looks because that was a big concern. So, and I know you watched, a lot of your staff have watched other shows as kind of guinea pigs to see what they're doing. So has, has there been any change or feel, I mean, other than wearing a mask and having to isolate and check and stuff like that, like, has there been any real change in feel overall that you find? That's tough to say about, I mean, we're, again, we get tested in Albuquerque, we get tested three times a week. And everybody's just tested, and everybody's really careful. And um, you know, when it comes to production, there's we we use a lot more remote heads where the camera operator is not right up in an actor's face. There's a remote head that's controlled, uh, you know, digitally. Uh, that's a little different. Um, but other than that, I mean, we're we're you know, the look of the show. Hopefully, you know, years from now, people will look at look at our show, season six, and never know that it was shot in the time of COVID. It'll just blend in with all the other seasons. Um, so that that's our knock on, knock on wood. I hope that happens. That's nice. And that, that will be good too, right? You want, it's just like as, as a, a, a big fan of timeless music, you love Pink Floyd. I like Pink Floyd. I love Van Halen. Both those bands have timeless music. You know, we can listen to any one of the hits that we love and we, you, you, and 30 years from now, 50 years from now, um, you and I won't be around probably then, but, uh, maybe, maybe 30 years, uh, but they're timeless pieces of music. And that's, what's nice about stuff here in the Gilliverse is we, we need to keep that timeless, even though we can feel a date by the cars that they're driving, um, and things like that, you don't feel it with, with now we've had to adapt to the pandemic and shooting like that. That's very cool. Yeah. I mean, and also our, Jimmy McGill's world does take place pre Breaking Bad. I mean, so there's, there's a specific time period, 2004 or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, that we're trying to match to. So of course we can't, even if we want to look like today's COVID days, we it would be ridiculous. That that's right. Well, that's I was just watching. I'm going to just jump up just for a quick millisecond into another whole show. I started watching Bosch, and I really really love Bosch. We got a lot of Gilliver's uh, crew over there. Uh, fantastic actors. Julian Emery last night appeared for the first time in season six. I saw, and they were just now. I'm I'm, just, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but st starting season six, they start talking about some kind of a global thing that's happening, and I don't know what that's going to be, but that could eventually be talking about maybe a pandemic and how they adapt with it, so they could maybe embrace it. That's kind of cool, but I know. 
know in this world we can't do that because the time period is so far back. But anyways, speaking of uh, Gillaverse, we are, we are blessed to have you tonight from Better Call Saul headquarters, and we're getting some really cool stuff behind you. If you want to give us, I know there's... Yearly Better Call Saul offices. I love it. Board, my mug, and there's some great artwork on the wall over there. I don't want to pan too much. I know... I don't think I, I don't think there's anything around that uh, I'm not allowed to show, but uh, okay. I just want to be careful. Yeah. What, what, what slips on the camera? <laughs> got my uh, my uh, handy axe around just in case. Signed by the Moncada brothers. Oh. You know, in case there's trouble, also signed by Michelle McLaren. Nice. Look at that. What else? Yeah, just uh, all, all all the stuff is here that I need. And you told me at one time too, way back, that you you keep a guitar kicking around and and I do. Got the, I, I I bought this uh, way back from my my best friend in high school. His brother sold me this guitar that I still play to this day. Now that'd be the Ibanez Roadstar series. Yeah, fantastic. That's a beautiful guitar. Yeah, beauty. And I yeah got the. Uh, let's see. The, the line six pod here. That's uh, oh, that's what started it all. Yeah, all the. <laughs> see, I, I don't know. I've, I haven't updated. I just I bought this back in two thousand five or whatever it was, and, and haven't haven't updated since. But it's been been great. You don't need to. I, I mean, oh, actually, I was gonna say like you don't. It's fantastic as it is. But I'm gonna talk to my friends at Line Six. See if we can get you hooked up with uh, the new Pod Go. It's fantastic. That's great. And I, I know this is a lot of people know this. It's just kind of uh, uh, trivia that's out there. But you you uh, did you give a little bit of instruction to Bob when he was doing like some of the uh, Deep Purple stuff? There was some, yeah, I just uh, on set just told him the, the, the notes for Smoke on the Water. That's pretty simple. That's pretty good. <laughs> and I love playing on his back, too, right? He's got the broken back or the hurt back when he uh, right. falls on a drumstick. That was a great episode. I love that. So we got a bunch of people jumping in the chat as well right now, too. I'll say hi to a bunch of them real fast. Uh, a lot of our regulars, I'm just going to say hi. Cray is here. Jennifer Stevens, our moderators. Karina, our head moderator team. Uh, Arctic Sakai is here. Speaking of Arctic Sakai, Tom, I'm going to send you guys something. I had to grab this and show you. Actually, sorry, this this wasn't from Arctic Sakai. Arctic Sakai has sent some other fantastic artwork as well, too. This is from Air, Marian Art and from Andrea over in Germany. They did a thing for Michael Mando. It was, uh, you know, basically, uh, uh, so Marian Art did the design, and Andrea had a lot of the concept behind it. Nacho's the kind of guy who won't squash a bug with a sledgehammer, and then that's Vince Gilligan's quote. And there are, cert there are signed certificates, and they're, they're numbered and everything. Um, Great. so I'm going to, there's, there's some for, uh, for you, for Vince, for, for Peter, for Michael, oh, I'm going to send them to the office. I got the address and I'll send them off to the address and, uh, you, that's one for all of you guys. So we'll share that. Um, thank you so much. And if, 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 if people haven't seen the, uh, the breaking bad art book that just came out, it's really fantastic. I know. I and know. I don't have a, my copies at home. Uh, I would show it, but, uh. It's really, it's really great. That's fantastic. I'll have to get that for sure. I was going to try to pan my camera, but there's some things you can't see here either, but I've got some really nice artwork from Arctic Sakai too. She, you talked about the Mankata brothers earlier. She did a really cool one of uh, both of Lewis and Danny and then um, Hector Salamanca as well too. I've, you've seen him on the show before here, but let's continue on. Say hi to a bunch of people real fast. Uh, Karina, I mentioned uh, Ursula is here. Lori is here. Uh, Rastarius, Pinterest fail mom. I won't get a chance to say hi to everybody. I'll try my very best. Miss Ignacio Varga, Pinterest fail mom. I said that PR. Uh, say hi. Who else we got here? Cray is here. Jennifer Lord. We got a lot of people jumping in from Mike Fallout is here. Saul Goodman, Twitter is here. Good to see him for sure. He didn't doing better by the looks of it. Uh, he did a super chat here and we'll say hi to him with that in a second. Michelle is here. Nice to see you. Uh, we got all the Gillivers fans here, the regulars. So let's just see if I miss it. Zoko is here, Nat Romero. Uh, let me see here. Uh, getting down towards Blue Blu-ray Addict is here. Nice to see you. We'll go through the list. Perfect time to have a quick drink. Uh, Avero, if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm the worst with names. So please don't uh, hate me if I pronounce your name wrong. Pat Bergstrom is here. Nice to see you. Let me see here. Getting down towards the bottom of the board. Boy, Cinema Dave is here. All right. To see if I'm trying to see if I, the pusher 51 is here. Cinema Dave, I mentioned that. Okay, so Saul Gibbon Twitter is a super chat says, uh, Hey, hello, Eric and Tom. Hope all is well. Another 48 testicles. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to plug promote Tom's testicles. Oops, I mean testicle thread. Important stuff. Okay, I, I kind of caught that thread somewhere in the What the hell is that all about? You know, I just started this. Uh, somebody put up a, a, a thing about to uh, replace one word in a movie title with mm. testicles. I just started doing one a day and now it's just a, it's just a thing. I, I 
kind of clears my mind if I just do a, a testicle tweet once a day. I'm up to 200 and something right now. Okay. So, so I do know it. it. Uh, you know, Twitter is just, it's good for promotion. It's just a, just a wasteland. And I just think, you know, this is, this is what it's made for. I agree. I, yeah. Yeah. Everything goes to die on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you know what, though? Everyone that was dumping on Twitter, how popular was Twitter last week when Facebook, uh, it, you know, went down the toilet, right? True. Uh, I didn't notice because I don't use yeah, you, or Instagram or any other. You didn't miss anything. That's the one thing I got on and it just, you know, I'm still not even sure why I still do it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, when, once the show is up and rolling and I can tweet, set photos and all that kind of fun stuff, it's, it's good. But yeah. other than that. It's an echo chamber that I don't want to be part of. Oh, I know. I don't blame you. Like I, I do it partially as a living and, and there's many days where I wish I didn't have it. It was quite nice. I'm not going to lie. It was like silent because Twitter, Instagram, and if you're a gamer, uh, WhatsApp is down. So a lot of people use that for international calling. Uh, that's Facebook owned as well too. And Oculus, you know, the gaming stuff, the, th uh, the virtual stuff, it was all down. So it was kind of some peace in the world for a little bit. There's a few other people say hi to as well too. Uh, let me see. Uh, just met Teresa Martinez is here and Robert. I uh, can't mention the last name. I can't say the last name very well without my glasses to say Robert. Paul Sir. Paul Sir is a voice of our show, which is fantastic. Oh, yeah. He's got a great voice. Eh? He does a lot of stuff in the NHL and hockey and stuff like that as well too. Uh, Marion Art, as we mentioned earlier, uh, with the uh, the artwork that we did here, and Jonathan, I think we might be just about caught up. Uh, you need a you need a ticker. I do, Name. I do need a ticker. I go across the bottom. I know, I might do that eventually. It's and leave valuable it. question time. I know. I let's jump over to that. So thank you everyone for participating in the live chat. We appreciate you very very much. So. Another, just a quick update as well, too, just so people love to know a little bit about your personal history, and you share some of it, a little bit. Your son started kindergarten um, last uh, September? Or yeah, this, this, uh, last month. Last yeah, month? He uh, started school, which is cool, um, and uh, my youngest son, Jack, is just uh, is still in preschool, and yeah, it's going, it's it's fun. We're doing, you know, doing t-ball, and uh, it's it's great. That's good. That's good. And uh, you felt like, I know, obviously deep in production, stuff like that, too, but you've had some time, uh, still, still enough time to spend time at home with the family and stuff like that as well? Well, yeah, I mean, God, while we were breaking the episodes, I was, we worked from home. It was all done on Zoom. So I was, you know, I could just uh, break for lunch and there I was with the kids. So it was, it was that, that part of it was, was awesome. It was just a different working dynamic, working over Zoom. It was, it was harder, um, but uh, it, had its, it had its benefits, which was being home with the kids the kids yeah for sure you've been back in the physical offices now for for how long roughly um well we've been editing we we didn't do any breaking of episodes in person everything was done on zoom but now that we're editing episodes uh i'm coming in to to give my my two cents uh we're sitting with peter in the editing room and our, our great editors and we're just working through the episodes Nice, nice. Can uh, now here again too. Like I, I, I know tonight with both with fans and myself. I'm not going to ask you anything um, pertaining to the future. Are you able to tell us roughly where you are right now? Is that something I can ask you physically? Where roughly? Uh, well, I'm I'm directing episode six eleven, and I'm going to go prep uh, in a in a few weeks. So we're right around six oh nine, six ten area. Nice. Now. I, I think this was common knowledge. You had one, you were in Albuquerque a while back for another episode. Yeah, so I directed episode seven. Okay. Which, uh, which is in the can. Uh, I came and I did my editing. Uh, Peter is yet to do what we do. We, there's an editor's cut. The editors go through all the footage, put it together. Then the directors come in, they do their cut. And then the producers, Peter, and usually me or, or somebody, one of the other, uh, Allison will come in and do a producer's cut. Uh, going over the director's cut and the editor's cut and sort of taking the best of what we like from one or the other or adjusting things, um, which is what we're doing now. We're going through the earlier episodes. Um, and yeah, Peter's yet to go through my episode. Um, so we're in, we're in some of the earlier episodes right now as far as editing. Nice. Well, speaking of editing too, one of the, one of the episodes, I mean, I enjoy speaking to everyone from the cast and crew here on the show as, as you did too, as well, even though you work with them here. Um, but Chris McCaleb, when he was on the show, I learned so much about what goes on, you know, and he, he as well was in the office. I think he was one of the, because he was one of the first people into the office because he's working late at night and all that kind of stuff. You know, no one's else around. It was safe. And just to know what goes on. And we were talking a little bit, because I think very shortly after he was on, uh, Thomas Golovich was on 
And so we were talking about, uh, Chris was saying how sometimes, you know, he would argue a point like, okay, I don't think there should be music here. And there was music. And then this, this camaraderie and the teamwork goes back and forth, how everyone's a team. Eventually it's for the betterment of the, the scene or the episode. And it's just so amazing to hear what goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, as a director, sometimes you'll just love something that was done and, but it's sometimes the pretty, you know, somebody with fresh eyes will watch the cut and say, well, this is, I know you like it, but it's a little repetitive. It's hitting a same point again, better to lose it. And sometimes you just have to let go and kill your darlings and things, things that you like. I mean, it's really, we try to streamline these things because uh, it's, it's amazing how much, how much stuff is in the script that when you get into the editing room, you're like, oh, we didn't need any of that. <laughs> didn't need it at all. It just works. If you just cut it out, it works fine. I know. And that's just one of those things that you, you know, maybe if you're super intelligent, you'll, you know, to cut it ahead of time. And it would certainly save a lot of money, but it's really until you get in the editing room, do you realize, oh, this scene works with just an expression on Bob's face or in Ray's eye. We'll you'll see something that says everything the words were saying, and you just get rid of the words. Or you know, sometimes you don't need the ending of a scene. And stuff we're doing right now, we were just I was just sitting with Chris, and you'll just realize, oh, we cut this moment off here. It still works, and it's. There's more intrigue because you're wondering, instead of spelling out exactly how a character feels, cut out in the middle of their thought, and it, and and it uh, it's more it's fun more fun to watch and more intriguing to watch. I agree with that, and with the with the people that you just mentioned as well too, but like Bob and Ray and and the the talented cast that you have. There's sometimes they don't even have you don't have to they don't have to speak a word and it's just so I mean you, you guys provide guys and girls provide some of the best I, I think I mean I'm a little biased because I love all of you but some of the the best writing I think on television um, and I'll have to apologize to Glenn Mazzara later on tell him that I'll say sorry Glenn because I love Glenn too uh, but I think it's some of the best writing on television and they don't have to speak sometimes and then you you with the soundtrack that we have the 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 visual landscapes that we have every shot is a postcard. No wonder the, the I mean it's it's just it's brilliant brilliant uh, television. Well, thank you, thank you very much. No problem. And uh, I know I know we're better than Glenn. So yes, nice. there you go, Glenn. Sorry, buddy. Glenn knows it too. It's, it's okay. <laughs> that's right. I saw I saw one of your tweets to, to Glenn. It was great. I won't even bring it up right now, but it was awesome. <laughs> Uh, here's a super chat from one of our moderators and good friends, Jennifer Stevens. She says, uh, and I know I've seen this on on uh, on your Twitter. Tom, how is the fantasy football going? You said you were projected to win zero games. P.S. Thanks for all you do, and I miss the Lone Gunman. Lone Gunman. I'm just surrounded by props here. I got this on my desk for some reason. It's Lone Gunman comic book. Oh, man. <laughs> Love that. Uh, and the fa- boy, fantasy football, yeah, I'm 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 in deep. The, the the league that was projected to get zero wins, I'm undefeated in. So it's like these projected, they they don't know. Just uh, just uh, go go with you know, just keep moving forward. Don't worry about the predictions. Perfect. I you know I follow sports a little bit, but I I wouldn't know what to do. I guess I I could just throw some numbers out and see what happens, and it, it might it might be okay. Honestly, yeah, that's the thing with fantasy football. It's like I feel like a monkey could also sit down and and tap out, Yep. you know, pick this and that and just get the same results that I get. Do you remember, do you remember the Simpsons episode where Homer was trying to get disability and he's working from home and he had like that chicken, whatever, he was just <laughs> making, make sure the nuclear power plant didn't melt down, whatever, that was hilarious. Uh, here is a super chat from Craig Crow says, Tom, thanks for your work. Uh, I'm a fan of X-Files and the Lone Gunman. Nice, so we got a double shot of Lone Gunman. Uh, were my favorites, was bumped, uh, spinoff got canceled so fast. Would like to know your thoughts on, on this topic. I know you only wrote two episodes, uh, she says. My thoughts on the Lone Gunman being canceled? I was really disappointed. Yeah. Because they were all great, great guys, a lot of fun actors, and uh, we were having a good time, and I feel like we really got, and Michael McKeon was in the uh, the finale episode of that uh, of that series, and then we, uh, it, was a, it was a cliffhanger, and we got canceled uh, for the cliffhanger, but we were able to do an episode in the X-Files that was sort of the the, you know, the, the set part two of that, that season ending cliffhanger. Okay. And I, I didn't watch a lot of the X-Files. I, I mean, I watched some at some as a young adult, whatever. And then obviously when I got to know you, I went back and rediscovered a little bit. And I, it was cool watching the one that you wrote. You actually had uh, Aaron Paul as uh, in your episode, didn't you? That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was, I remember him coming into the, uh, uh, the, uh, the casting office 
we sat there, you know, because actors would come in and read for the part. And I remember him coming in and sitting there and thinking, you know, he's the guy, he's the guy for this role. And he was great. He was just, I, re I knew right away that, that he was going to be something. That's, that was, that was fun to see. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he brought it very, very early and you could just see that he had so much passion. And uh, I mean, pro did you think, did you think that there'd be a day down the road that you'd be working with him again, some capacity? I had always hoped. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I would always sort of keep track of him uh, after my X-Files episode, I would see him in like a Coca-Cola commercial here and a TV show there. And I always think that we, you know, somewhere, somehow where we're going to, you know, knock on wood, as long as I kept working, I was going to, meet up with him again and, and look where it happened okay. right that's absolutely fantastic what what a nice uh, uh turnaround uh here's a a question now i'm going to pronounce this name wrong eleftherios uh how much is saul informed by dante's inferno i remember the scene at the parking lot was set at the fourth floor that is green coincidence <laughs> we're not that smart coincidence <laughs> <laughs> you know i i should just say that we did it on purpose you should. I was going to say that you guys could, could take so much credit. Yeah, no, we're not. We're not that smart. That's cool that people can read that that sort of thing into it. But no, we. I can't tell you why we it was the fourth floor of the of the parking deck. That that's cool though, and you know what? Happy accidents, right? Happy accidents. Absolutely. Oh my God, we we get lucky with with happy accidents. There's so many things that uh, we, you know, that just sort of happen that, uh, that we can't you know, explain why they happen. I mean, uh, can you give me an example? The beginning, of Breaking, the beginning of Breaking Bad, the writer's strike happening when it did. I mean, uh, you know, Jesse Pinkman could be dead. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know for the writer's strike. And, uh, you know, realize, you know, I wasn't there for the, for that season, but uh, that's, that's an example of something that, that, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of others, and nothing's popping into my head right now. But. No, but I, I remember you sharing it early, way back in the get-go when we first, when I first had John before you even became a co-host. You talked about uh, all the different things that could have happened to to Jesse. You know, Bob in season two, Bob Odenkirk getting getting Bob Odenkirk was supposed to be in the in the season two finale, and he was booked on another show. So Vince and, and the gang had to write another character who became Mike Ermintrout, and we wouldn't have Jonathan Banks on the show if not for the fact that that Bob had booked uh, an episode of how I met your mother, Rainbow, whatever it was. I don't know. Some show he was on it. Yeah. How I met your mother. How I met your mother. Yeah. yeah. And look at that. I mean, a uh, Banksy is as worthy of his own spinoff in itself. I know I'm not going to go down that territory, but, um, but it's certainly, yeah. you know, you could, there's, there's, there's a character right there that has so much, everyone wants him to be their dad, you know, uh, or, or their buddy. And uh, I mean, I've from, I've heard from you and everyone that works with him is just like, the, the sweetest guy to work with. Yeah. Oh, pain in the ass for sure. Yeah. <laughs> a sweet pain in the ass. Yeah. Here is a question from, um, I should just, I should keep sending these and you could pronounce the names. I'm worse. I'm bad for this, but Fetisite, uh, what other projects are you interested in? Uh, after better call Saul, do you have a clue of what you'll do? I thought maybe you might start a pink Floyd, uh, tribute band or something. And <laughs> <laughs> I should, I think I'm ready to go out on the road. Okay. And tour. With the lasers and everything no i i wish i knew exactly what was next i don't know so uh you know hopefully the universe will will bring something to me that uh, i'm as passionate about as as breaking bad and better call saul so we'll we'll see I, that, a lot left to do here on saul so like i said I'm, i'll be directing shortly and there's still a lot of editing to do and and something will come up i agree I agree. And there's not enough, to, you can't worry about what's next right now. Cause like you say, you've got so much work and so much focus and, uh, to, to keep your head down, not up wondering what's going on you know, or focus on what you got to do. Um, but I know there's greatness. I mean, you, what you've, the whole team has done. I think everyone that's been in that writer's room, that's there today and come and gone. Uh, a lot of them have gone on to greatness as well too. Um, I, I think there's a great future for all of you. And just, uh, we, we all will watch anything that you're a part, all of you are a part of. It's just wonderful, wonderful writing. And uh, it, it just works. It just simply works. Well, thank you very much. No problem. No problem. Um, it's true. <laughs> uh, from Blu-ray Addict, uh, do you have a favorite? Oh, see, this is a tough one. This is like asking your favorite child. Um, but and this might be fair to you because you you weren't involved in Breaking Bad from the early onset, very early. Um, so so Blu-ray Addict says, do you have a favorite episode of Breaking Bad? And maybe this, because you weren't there from the, the first season, whatever, do you have a particular episode that you would uh, really say was special to you? Um, 
there's all, I mean, there's, there's all, I'm a, I'm a true, I, and I came to the show a fan because I wasn't involved with it. Um, so yeah, those, a lot of those season two episodes were, were four days out is just such an awesome episode and, and the Better Call Saul episode directed by Terry McDonough and written by, by Peter was a great one. Um, Sunset, I love, that was just one of those episodes that uh, just came together in such a good way that we were, I, I just love that episode because we were so stuck in the writer's room and and uh, we really backed ourselves into a corner. So, which is why I think the end of the episode is surprising because it took us so long to figure out the answer to how to, <laughs> how to Walt and Jesse get out of a RV with Hank Schrader uh, circling. Yeah. So I- it was, I remember the discussions on that one and you know that we, you, we talked about this at length and that, that was amazing you know how because you talked about different things about tunneling out like crawling through a hole in the floor like all the different things and you know what's really funny i i i'm, I'm sure you've seen well you don't, you're not on facebook and stuff like that but you'd probably see it on twitter and stuff like that but i always you see this common thread people talk about and breaking bad the fly episode and they say how much they hate it and I even, when I had RJ Mitty on the show, um, and actually he was, oh, it was so bad. I had him on the show about two weeks ago and I had a horrible internet problem. We had to cancel the show. We were like two minutes into the show, but that was his return to the show. But I asked him when he was on the first time back in around January through March, whatever, I asked him about that show and he was actually talking about how important that show was. And I think so too. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Again, I'm not the all-knowing burrito when it comes to Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul. I just, I just pretend to be. Um, actually I don't, I just let everyone else tells me all the good stuff, but wasn't that something where it was, uh, was John Carlo Esposito not available for that when he had hurt himself or something or what, what was the concept? Why fly happened? But it is a very powerful episode. Fly happened because we we're, we we're trying to save money and write oh, a bottle episode, right? which is about people who don't know what a bottle episode is. It's just a, it's just a, a show contained to one set or contained to our stage sets. So that because it costs a lot of money to go out in the world and bring trucks and mm-hmm. and all the lights and everything on location, so we were trying to do a, a show that was set strictly in the super lab, um, which was the thinking in behind doing that particular show because we were so so over. I can't remember what sent us over budget, but so a lot of the earlier episodes were very expensive to produce, and by the time we got to around episode ten of thirteen that season, uh, it just the thought was let's do a a uh, an easier episode <laughs> well when i get and when i get the great ryan johnson to come in and and direct that that's perfect. Well, when I get Peter or and or Vince back on the show, I'll ask them. But I think it was probably your diva demands that uh, that really put it over budget. <laughs> you know, I, I know how you are. Um, but seriously, I, another question here from Miss Ignacio Vargas says, "Do you have a favorite uh, favorite or funny moment from working on Better Call Saul?" I mean, there's I imagine the things that happen um, before that camera rolls and the second it's done. Is there anything that stands out that just like, I mean, you, you have one of the best sense of, or maybe the most warped sense of humor of anybody I know, um, but good sense of humor. Uh, it's humor anyway. So we'll have to say that. Do you, anything that really stands out that might've even topped you? <laughs> God, funny. I, boy, I'm sure there's a million and I'm just, my brain isn't working properly from being the editing room. All That's okay. All day, nothing is popping into my, I mean, I funny. I mean, I remember we were location scouting, and the uh, we were arriving at Saul's office, and right as we got there in our bus, the uh, at Albuquerque uh, Breaking Bad tour RV was crossing. We were just we just missed each other, oh. and I thought that was that was very funny when it happened. Frank and Jackie and team the, being on the set with Bob and and uh, and Jonathan and every, you know everybody's so great. I mean, there's, there's there's a lot of laughing that goes on. So yeah very blessed that way to be <laughs> to work with a lot with a lot of great funny people a lot of laughter at work which is great that's fantastic i mean with bob, bob odenkirk one of the gr- great you know writers of saturday night live and just a great comedian bob and david just to you know to be to be on set with him and uh yul babino mm-hmm. <laughs> that was very funny and bill burr and the i guy know who was surrounded by by top comedians it's just what when I had Lavelle on the show, I mean, it was so just just listen to him talk, and he's so passionate, right? And all I'm his saying, stand, his stand up special was very good on it's on Showtime. I I forget where I saw it. I Netflix I maybe. Dial and I saw it, and I 
when my wife and I watched it. It was very funny. I saw you tweeting about it. It might actually, I think it might be Amazon Prime. I have it bookmarked on one of mine. I watch it too. He's 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 great. It really is. Um, I love it for sure. Uh, here is a super chat from Man Cardo uh, seventy eight. How, how would you compare writing the final season of Better Call Saul versus Breaking Bad? Will the pacing change? Do you have an example of criticism you took into account? Beatles ver- versus Beach Boys. Hmm. Well, well, it's certainly an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Beatles all the way. Nice. You know, and the Beach Boys, very talented. You mm-hmm. know, uh, Dennis Wilson was uh, great, but uh, you know these th- those four guys. You got John Lennon and Paul McCartney working as a team, and then you get George Harrison coming into his own as a, as a songwriter and and Ringo Starr as your as your drummer. Come on, you can't can't be beat. That's, they they weren't using session 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 musicians to uh, to record their albums. No, like, uh, good vibrations. Uh, anyway, and the uh, I'm sorry. What was the other question? It was uh, oh, what do we what did I learn from um, season me... final season of uh, Breaking Bad was a strange one because it was all it was I didn't know about this show. It was all ending. It was it was very depressing. My father had passed away, and during the filming of episode my final episode of of Breaking Bad. It was just, uh, it, was a, it was a weird time. Um, they did a tribute to your dad yeah. too, didn't they? they? And in the credits, they gave a tribute to your dad. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And now this season with the, the, the COVID uh, uh, restrictions and us all working through Zoom and not being in the same room with each other, they're all very, so it's just, they're very different. Uh, hopefully people will like this season as much as the final season of Breaking Bad. I'm, I am liking it. So that's, uh, you know, hopefully that carries over to everybody else. Um, I don't, final season of Breaking Bad is not one I I tune into a lot because I find it so. It's a hard season. It's very it's a very dark, mm-hmm. and especially five B. It's like I don't when those come on. I don't I don't watch as, <laughs> as much. I know they say like the you know uh, Ozzy Mandis being the greatest episode. Uh, it's like I I have trouble watching because it's you know. Hank Schrader getting shot and it's very depressing. <laughs> it is depressing. It is it is depressing. You just felt that unravel. That's one of the good things about about it though, is you just felt the world coming unglued. And you know, Walt growing so big so fast. And you know, um, it's so funny. You can watch it a couple of different times. I don't know how many times I've watched it. I'm gonna say roughly five as far as going through both Better Call Saul and and Breaking Bad, the whole series, about five times each. And you go from loving Walt to hating Walt to to everywhere in between, but you just felt this uncomfortable unraveling. Everything around was falling apart, you know. And and of course, you being a parent, I'm sure you you feel a little different about it than the average person does. Myself as well too. You know, when you have kids, you're worrying about the baby, you know, and you know, and and you know, teenage son, all that stuff. It was it was very difficult to see it. Uh, go down the way it did. But, and, but here's what I love about it. I'm a big fan of walking dead. Talk about that briefly on another episode here and I won't go down that road again. I love that, but I think they've gone way too long, way, way, way too long. Um, Vince and Peter and your team know when to get out. Right. And do you, I mean, I know there was kind of an exit plan with better call Saul. We wanted to wrap up like not a heck of a lot longer than breaking bad. Do you feel where you're going out is, is great. is good. Yeah, it feels, I mean, we, we just, like with both Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, the number of episodes was just kind of a, you know, just throw, we threw a line in the water and it's like, okay, that, you know, that feels right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we didn't, it, was, it wasn't based on anything. We didn't really know how much story we had left. It was just an intuition. And I feel like as with Breaking Bad, where the story just kind of, I know some people say that the story ended uh, two episodes before it actually did, but I, I don't agree with that. Um, Breaking Bad felt like it ended where it had to. And that's just, I get the same feeling with Better Call Saul. I feel like we picked, for some reason, we picked 13 episodes and it just sort of feels like the right amount. Like, and as we were breaking it, we were saying, well, if we need another one or we need one less, we'll do, you know, we'll just talk to the studio and adjust. And it just worked out that we're doing 13 and it just felt like everything fell into the right amount of, of episodes. I, I agree with that. Just being a fan from the outside looking in, that's all I am. You know, uh, I think that is a perfect amount. 10, there's just no way. I, I think fans alone would be like so starving just for a little bit more. I, and I don't, I personally, again, I don't know anything about the writing. I don't know how it all works. I, I mean, I know how it works with you guys, but um, I don't think this story could have been told in 10. I just don't. 
it's complicated. Yeah, there's a lot of it's not it's just not just Jimmy and Mike's story. There's a lot of other characters to sort of wrap up and tie into the Breaking Bad universe in a satisfying way. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's you know I'm, I'm trying to be I'm, I have to be careful. I, I know. I know too. I know anything about any characters or no. you know secondary characters uh, who may or may not appear. Uh, who have, you know, who've, you know, appeared in earlier episodes of Better Call Saul. That, uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm saying too much. No, I, I got you. But it's, it's all comes down to what, what, this, what the Gilliverse has been known for, both through all three shows, including El Camino, is the pacing and and um, like a, a perfect example is we talk about Ray Seahorn many times. You know, just the way the way she'll breathe and she'll you know, just allow spacing and which is so so important. But the show, the pacing would have been completely thrown off, I think, with ten episodes and more than thirteen. Well, I mean, fans would probably take it, but it's nice. It's just nice to get in, get out, and I, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I I mean, I speak for all of us. I'm sure we just can't wait. So that's gonna be fantastic. Another super chat coming in. Uh, from Price of Reason, you've heard his name before. He has a great uh, um, channel as well. Uh, great to see you both reunited. Looking forward to see season six, Better Call Saul. Just a statement, but we're looking forward to that for sure. And I, I imagine all the cast and crew are just just as chomping at the bit as well too to see this on the screen, eh? Oh yeah, I mean it's it's it, this this season has been. I mean we've breaking it for a, almost a year. I feel like breaking just you know breaking the episodes and writing them and then. Uh, production and COVID restrictions slowing everything down, and then Bob's uh, unfortunate, you know, medical incident. Yes, very scary, and that uh, you know we just had to, you know, everyone step away and, and and make sure he's okay before before returning. You know, something I saw online, which I just I felt so happy to be a part of the Gilvers family. Um, in some other areas, you know, some other shows, or just maybe it's bands or any any kind of other entertainment. People are these fans of these people, and something happens bad to that person, and the first thing they think about is, "Oh, we don't get our show, we don't get our concert, we don't get our tour." And I saw everybody literally like, "Screw Better Call Saul, I don't care. Is Bob okay? Is Bob okay?" And the whole world came together. I mean, we were on pins and needles because, um, you know. There's a lot of media out there, and it was um, even for you guys. I, I know, you know, speaking to you, it was radio silent for a couple of days or a good 28 hours or more. That must have been scary. It was. I had just left Albuquerque. Yep. Um, and then it happened. I got a phone call from Peter. Whew. About what happened? And I was just shocked, you know, scared out of our minds for, for him because he's, you know, he is, he is a healthy guy. And then it was this freak incident. Where you know, again, I don't. I don't even know all. The, I haven't seen Bob since it happened. But no, you haven't. I was going to ask you that. No, uh, he's. You know, I haven't. I, I haven't seen him or talked to him. Actually, wow. So, but he's um, looking good in media, from what we see. Forward to getting back to Albuquerque and seeing him in person. Good. But it was nice to see him out at the. Uh, I heard him singing, uh, taking me out to the ball game at the Cubs uh, stadium. I saw that video, so that was great to see. And I know, uh, from all accounts, from everybody I've talked to, on set. Uh, he's been doing great. That's good. Well, I, I saw some photos shared on Facebook from some of our friends. I think Karina shared some, some of our other friends shared them too. Uh, it was from uh, Tony Dalton's Instagram and there was Tony, Ray, um, Patrick and Bob at a, a dinner function, a nice outdoor function somewhere. And they were all looking great. Bob was looking healthy and nice and thin and, and healthy looking good. So that's a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's an action star. He's in, he's in great I shape. I know. Yeah. Right. I know. <laughs> and, and, and and I'm sure, you know, and, and he's probably looking forward to, I, I know, I know this, you know, what's been shared before. He's looking forward to wrapping up this character as well, too, because he's aging a little bit. I mean, he's a great looking guy for his age. Don't get me wrong. Um, he's in way better shape than I am. But, you know, the, the, his age for the character, you know, we got to tie those up with Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And it's it's a good time to end that as well, too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's difficult. I mean, anybody who cuts together a scene from breaking bad with better call Saul's. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, okay, we're, we're doing the best we can here with, with, uh, our, you know, all of our, you know, Gus Fring and, and Mike Irwin Trout and they don't, they don't look like they did back in the day, but that's, you know, hopefully people just go with it. Yep. And you know, if there was, if there was holes somewhere, if the writing was weak, I think that's when people would start to poke, but because everything else is so good, the cinematography, the music, uh, the writing, people are forgiving for, for a lot of those things, right? Even, even if God forbid, 
um, someone had to be recast, right? Now, you're not going to recast Saul Goodman or Jimmy McGill, but, you know, if there's a, a, a third tier, tier actor and they had to be recast, that could be often over, uh, overlooked because of everything else that's supporting it, the foundation. Right. Yeah. Um, been, so, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, we've been lucky that way that, you know, again, you know, again, we you always, this, these things take so long and, and you expect incidents to happen to, I mean, life happens to people and, and what, like what happened with Bob and you expect with all these actors that possibly some terrible thing might, might <laughs> succumb to you know, one of them. And, and luckily, you know, and to all the, all of us writers and yeah. directors, and luckily nobody's, uh, you know, it hasn't happened to any of us. Well, we'll look at honesty too. And knock on, knock on. We close calls. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, look at we. I mean, filming in in the midst of a pandemic on the outs, outset of a pandemic as well too. I mean, anything could have happened there as well too. So, I mean, kudos to everybody and safety, obviously uh, number one. And uh, and good that you have uh, teams involved. Where in a case like when Bob had an incident and it, people were there ready to respond. So that's fantastic. I'm going to jump over to a section you're probably familiar with this from before. We have audio questions. I only have two tonight, and I didn't get a chance to listen to them tonight. Uh, they should be yeah. safe. Uh, they're both from Karina and Lori. Uh, Karina is our head moderator, and from Lori, one of our members as well, too. So I think I'm going to start with Karina's, and here she goes. Hi, Tom. This is Karina. Since you've had such a great partnership with Vince since your X-Files days, do you see yourself continuing to work with him on future endeavors? Can you tell us anything about the new project that you and Vince are producing, or at least confirm that it is happening? Thank you. Oh, I would, I mean, my dream is to keep working with Vince and Peter. I have such a great relationship with them and I work really well with them. Um, the project you're speaking of was uh, Vince and I wrote a script called Beanstalk uh, years ago. And uh, it just didn't, you know, sometimes these things don't get picked up and maybe there will be hope for it somewhere down the line, but right now it's, it's on a shelf. So uh, don't know if it'll ever be made. Maybe it will be someday, but uh, right now, uh, we 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 wrote it for Disney and uh, just you know didn't didn't go forward. Didn't go forward. Did so I think it, Mark Mark Johnson was attached to produce, and I think I think he might still be trying to pitch it other places. But uh, okay, well we'll. I can't. We'll... Uh, I, can't I, I I I haven't heard anything about that in a very long time, and I don't think anything's happening with it. Okay. Um, and we'll go over to Lori's question. This is the last audio question. We'll jump back to some of our ones we have on paper here. We'll see what she says. Hey there, Tom. This is Lori. Which writer or writers will be credited for the final episode of Better Call Saul? And how was it determined who got that assignment? Thanks very much. Is that something you can be addressed or no? God, I, I, yeah, I don't know if I want to say who, okay. uh, I mean... Uh, I don't want to get in trouble. No problem. Well, <laughs> let's let's plead the fifth on that one. If I don't think the the list of who's written what has been out put out yet. So okay. I think people could probably guess. Yeah. Who wrote the final episode of Better Call Saul? Yeah. Um, I think we could all take a guess uh, on that. Do you, Do you think I, I, are we finally going to get some Emmy love next year? Do you think? I'd be. I mean, we've been very very lucky to get nominated so often. So I know. I'd love. I'd love a one. When we have it, we won for the webisodes, but I'd love to win in the so-called major categories. I'd love, you know, Bob Ray, and you know, love. I'd love an actor to get uh, to walk away with a win. That'd be nice. But I guess it it all comes down to where it matters most. I mean, it, when in the fans' eyes, I mean, you guys have won tenfold already. You know, and that's the, that's the street team back in the days of the old days, like before social media bands would be out there putting posters on the, the hydro poles and stuff like that uh, to promote things. Well, that's what matters the most. It's the fans out on the street spreading the word of Gilliverse. And, you know, they they just say, you know, screw this and screw that. They, 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 it's already wins in their book. Yeah, I think if we can get on the air when the when the crown isn't airing, then we have a shot. <laughs> There's some Everybody's good. Voting. Why? Hey, stop voting for the crown. I mean, voters. I know. Oh, damn it. And that was, I, I enjoyed that show. Did you like it? Did you watch it? I didn't watch. No? Uh, with the, we, with the kids, we, it's very hard to watch television. Yeah. We're, we're tired at night. We, we have all these Jeopardy uh, episodes <laughs> banked up uh, that were slowly, we have like a hundred and something that were slowly oh. slogging through. Oh, man. 
Well, what I did like, I won't touch base on Crown Long, but what I did like about it is how it's over, I guess, what, four seasons or whatever, how uh, like two main actors or, you know, like different ages by different actors. That was really cool. I really enjoyed that. That was, and and, and you really fell in love with each of the actors um, and you hate to see now there's a whole new one coming in now, a whole new family or you know, pe- people playing the older people, but it was really well done. It was really cool. I, I know that wouldn't work in the Gilliverse, but it was, it was neat uh, done. And it's not, I would, I would, uh, I would like to stop talking about the crown now because they keep beating us. There you go. Well, we're done with crown. <laughs> um, I, I know it's, I know it's a great show. And, yeah. How it, it wins for a reason. How, how about um, Vince? Now, Vince, was, he's been on the show a couple times here, and I'm looking forward to getting him back when, when everything is done, when he can finally catch his breath again. Um, I imagine he is, uh, oh, I, I know for a fact, he's probably got a lot more hands on in this episode. Are you seeing him a lot more? Is he, is he on set a lot more this episode? I mean, this, uh, this season, I mean. Yeah, as, uh, I think we already, when we did our previous Inside the Gilliverse episodes, we, it was not a secret that he was... Uh, uh, involved in this season. He was there when we broke every episode. Uh, nice. Like he left mid season three to go do El Camino and other things. And uh, so he wasn't involved uh, in the writing of four and five. He directed, but he didn't write. And, but with season six, he was there from the very beginning to the very uh, bitter end, <laughs> breaking all the episodes. And he's, uh, he's, you know, he'll have directing credit for sure. And, uh, Again, I don't want to, you know, there hasn't been an official list release about who's doing what, directing what, so I just want to be careful. I don't think it's a secret that he's he has worked as a director uh, for season six. That's fantastic. Definitely looking forward to that. And, and I know it's got to be bittersweet for him, too, seeing, uh, you know, his baby and, and Peter's baby, you know, it's come to this end, you know, and, and we don't, no one wants to think that yet, of course. Um, and especially for the, the the actors and stuff like that as well too. Um, I don't think it hit. It really hit home for me in Breaking Bad when we mixed the final episode. Mm. And it doesn't really. It's weird. It's, even after you're done shooting and you have your rap party, the editing still goes on. And, and I don't think until we mix the final episode of Better Call Saul, it will really hit me hard because it hit me hard on Breaking Bad, and I I know it'll do the same thing uh, on Better Call Saul because it's like the final thing to do is mix the episode and. Let it send it send it on to the studio, and then uh, it's it's ready to air. I imagine it's going to be. I, and I here again, too, you may not even know about this. And I'm not even going to ask for answers on this, too. But I mean, some of the premiere parties, it's going to be it's going to be a big celebration. If COVID allows, I don't know. I mean, yeah, for, you know, budgetary reasons. So it's like I don't even know how much money we have for a party. <laughs> Nothing's what left. We're allowed to do everybody standing around with a mask on. Yeah, uh, it's you know, I'd love a rap party, but you know. There'll be a, enough money left for a couple of chicken wings and maybe some some spritzers or something. That's about it. Or pretty much. Or maybe bring your own. Right. You you, you yes. can come into the club, bring no problem. Food, bring yeah. your own. That'd be fantastic. No, I I think I think it's gonna be great. I mean, uh, we'll obviously look forward sometime next year. I won't ask you any dates stuff like that, but I know we're getting closer, which is nice. And and I every I do, and I'm not even sure what yet. I'm, I'm still not even sure what date I'm going out to Albuquerque. Things are it's always in flux with uh, the schedule. So I know I'm going soon. I just don't know exactly when yet. Do, do you get short notice sometimes? Like it's basically okay, Tom, you're going in three days or not usually like that. I think just COVID has oh. has really screwed things up as far as um when when things are happening. Okay. Are th- at, back at home where you are there, um are, are things getting a little bit more um relaxed a little bit? Or is it still bad you're like it's good here in Canada where we're at? Um it depends where you go. Um, we went to uh the air show down in Huntington uh, took the kids because the kids are big fans of the Blue Angels and we saw the Canadian uh, snowbirds Canadian geese there. Oh, so yep. You know, they flew over. We saw and uh, and down in Huntington, it's like we're all there in our masks and people are just walking around without masks. And I'm like, okay, this is this is how people are doing it down here. I guess that you know, uh, as long as people aren't getting sick, uh, you know. But you know, there's still people are still getting sick, so we're. I'm being, my family's being extra careful. I know because just because if I get sick, uh, then I got to quarantine for 10 days and there goes my directing gig. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what would happen if I actually got sick with COVID. So uh, what it would do to, to, you know, I don't, they might bring in another director for all I know, because you can't, you know, once the train's rolling, you can't you know, stop you it. Keep no dead freight. 
That's right. Can you imagine? I can't imagine that. I mean, th- I mean, that's this is a chance of a lifetime. I mean, this is like uh, okay. I might be overselling it here a little bit, but it's like watching the man walk on the moon. It's like watching Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock. I mean, getting the chance to direct these final episodes is pretty. Oh, yeah. um, I'm feeling incredibly lucky and blessed to be able to just not only just write it but direct it. So it's uh... yeah. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Well, I finally got my double shot here in Canada. So, um, uh, and and uh, I, I followed some of your advice because I remember I think your 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 wife took some some Advil or something for like for the pain before she got the shot. You were telling me about that, and you didn't. I think you said you had some. Yeah. Um, so I I did okay, but my second shot, I was um, I got very I got kind of like the flu symptoms from it. Um, my friend Andrea is here, so she told me to put like an ice pack on my shoulder when I got the shot. So that took away the pain. So I shot, I lay down on the couch for two hours with that. No problem with that. But I got very tired and very nauseous. I had to take about three two-hour power naps. I was just really knocked out. Next day after that, no problem. So everyone's different, right? That is true. What we're doing here in Canada, too, we're passing a thing now, too. You have to be double vaccinated to go into to eat in a restaurant now. I heard that's happening here in California, but I or in Los Angeles at least, but I, I don't know how they're going to enforce that, or, or you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's tough, yeah. My, I have my vaccination card, so it's been my been in my wallet. It's all crumpled up, and, <laughs> and I don't know if you can even read it. But uh, hopefully, if they start doing that, they'll accept this. I think I have to apply electronically or something. Okay. Yeah, usually, usually you should you should be able to have a, they should give you a receipt. You could even just save like the PDF on your phone or something. That's what I've done. So just show a picture on your phone, and it'll never get destroyed. Um, and here's a question. This is I, I, I'm going to answer this for the person uh, because it's a question that we can't answer. Um, I'm just going to say no to it. This is from Rassasaurus, a super chat. Thank you so much for for asking this question. Saying will there be another spinoff? And that's obviously something we can't answer. And um, Vince has kind of touched base on that as well before too. Kind of with a you never know, uh, but most likely and not. You know, like I think Vince knows when to get out, and so we won't we won't address that one, Rassasaurus. But thank you for asking that question. We would all love it. We would love it if it could be done. Um, but thank you for the super chat as well, too. And something I wanted to point out as well, too, just because we're getting closer to the top of the hour here, Tom is wearing this really, really cool shirt. I'm going to jump over to the big screen just to show it a little bit more here. Land of the Enchantment. Tell us a little bit about that shirt, what it's about, and I'll tell you what's going to happen with it. Land of Enchantment, Enchantment that's the uh, state motto of uh, New Mexico. That's the symbol on the – this is basically the New Mexico flag. And Mike wore it in my episode 509. Uh, when they went to the, uh, the the truck stop after walking through the desert, and they changed their clothes, and this is the, the shirt that uh, Mike picked. Uh, I have a great picture of uh, Jonathan Banks in, in his costume fitting, giving the finger to the camera. <laughs> in the shirt. Um, so yeah, that's why. And this was a crew gift. Uh, every episode, every episode, the director or writer will uh, to thank our great crew will come up with something like that. You know, just it's a small token of our appreciation, but everybody. On the crew, everybody who works on the show gets uh, whatever the director or writer decides uh, that uh, they come up with. And this is, I you know, we we did this costume for Mike, and I thought, oh, what a what a great crew gift for the uh, for everyone. So I made a bunch. I love it. Well, guys and girls, this is very cool. Now I wish we had enough uh, shirts to go around for everybody, but we've got two. Tom yeah, is going. Two, there we go. I'm gonna jump onto the big screen. We show yeah, leftovers that didn't. Uh, you know, I always get extra made. Unfortunately, there's all we have left are extra large. So I know there's probably some some smaller fans out there who are going to be like, oh, I, w- I want that shirt, but it's not going to fit me. That's okay. You can always wash them and shrink them. Uh, so shrink them, and put, <laughs> whatever you can do. But here's what we're going to do. Uh, Tom's going to be sending me two of those to send out to two lucky winners. So tonight, after the video is done, it takes about 15 minutes or so um, to, to be able to comment on the video. So I'd like you to do something after the show is done tonight. Number one, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Uh, hit that subscribe button, and I promise to work just as hard to keep you as a subscriber as I did to get you. And as I've always said before, sometimes I don't work hard to get you, but I will work hard to keep you. Thumbs up. Let us know that you appreciate the show and just comment uh, what your hopes and thoughts are for season six. Uh, just a nice comment down below, one comment per person, and I will do a random draw. Uh, I will close the draw by next Thursday and on Friday's Gilliver's show, I will pick two winners and then you'll contact me and or us through our team here and we will get those out to you. And Tom, I think is going to even autograph the tag on it. 
Yes, I will do that. Perfect. I, I suggested to Tom that he signed the shirt, but Tom had a great idea too, because, you know, in the perfect world, you know, we, you know, we'd love to preserve that shirt, but we can't, if you wash it, you're going to wash out the signature. So he's going to sign the tag. If you want to take the yeah, tag off. There's a, note, there's a note to the crew that gets attached to each shirt. So I'm just going to keep the note on there. I'll sign the, sign the back and I'll, I'll wait to hear who the winners are and I'll personalize it for whoever, uh, whoever won. Fantastic. Now, did you show, I, I, I know you showed me in a picture, you sent me a picture. Did you show where it says uh, 509 on the back of the shirt? Can you show yeah. that? Sure. Right on the, on the back, uh, the back of the neck. Yes. There's an actual better call Saul symbol on there. Perfect. Fantastic. Uh, so, speaking of crew gifts, my very first episode with uh, Aaron Paul, uh, I have this sitting on my desk. I did shirts of these and, and the guy who made the shirts uh, threw in a mug for me. So I, I've had this since uh, 2001. Nice. Nice. Well, this has been a pleasure as well tonight too, getting to see kind of a, this is the second time I think I've had uh, someone from, from the office. Chris was at work um, uh, in his office there. This is, I think you is probably the second one. So it's nice to get a tour inside uh, the shop. And as you told me, I mean, you know, instead of rushing home, this worked out perfect for you because you were working today. So that's, that's great. Worked right up until, until start time. Yeah. And the very long drive home is a short drive. A short drive. Good. So. Good. Well, give my best to the family. Uh, so nice to see you again. It's a pleasure. And uh, you yeah, still. I, I hate. I hate doing this without not having the kids run in. I know. Running. Jumping off the couch. I remember the couple of those episodes. <laughs> playing the guitars and stuff. That's fantastic. Next, next time we do this, I'll, I'll try to do it from home so the kids can can wave to their grandma who's watching. That's right. And you know, I do have proof. I can go back. It's on my SoundCloud. I have audio proof when Michael McKeon asked you about the death call. And he said, uh, you know, talking about you leaving Gilliverse uh, as a co-host. And then you said you're coming back. And I, I have audio, and I, I will extort you on that. You think you, you want to entertain that thought when you get some time next year? Absolutely. Certainly when the shows are starting on the air and, and they're up and running, yeah, I'd love to, to jump back on and talk about Because right now I feel handcuffed. I can't really talk about I know. what's happening. So, but once they air, then I can just, you know, answer any questions about how we did X, Y, and Z, and why we did the things we did. But right now, I can't even say any of the plots that happened. No, I understand. We're gonna have a party because there's so much to talk about, and that's what some people said to me. They said, like, oh, how are you gonna keep this going when the show is done? That that's just the start of it again. That's just the rebirth. We can go s circle back and, and talk about everything, Breaking Bad included. And I know one one show that I think was very very popular. It was our second show, and I can't believe it. It was our second show, and uh, thanks to you, we had Michael Mando on the show. And um, Michael has, I've been talking with him a few times via email and he, he wants to come back for sure, but he really wanted to, for the show to be on the air and he's going to come back. So uh, that would be a perfect time. Maybe, maybe what we'll do is we'll time it. Once you give me the green light that you can come back, we'll get Michael as our first guest because I just got to, it's got to get arrange it with him and he'll do it. That'd be fantastic. And of course the girls are going to go crazy. Um, and, and, and the guys too. Exactly. Too sexy. <laughs> he is too sexy for the show. We have to put like a maybe some kind of a limit. We can only have so many people watching, and we're going to be stealing a lot of people's bandwidth that night. So you have to yeah. be careful. I'm going to put the ugly filter on Mando. <laughs> okay, and he's still going to be sexy as hell, isn't he? You're right. That's right. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't make him ugly. Listen, this has been absolutely fantastic, Tom. Love to have you back. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll talk off the air here quickly. Here, let you go, get back home to that lovely family, and everybody. Uh, we'll tune in again next week, same time. And for people that are my musician friends, come and check us out tomorrow at three p.m. Eastern, twelve p.m. Pacific, as we relaunch the Helix Hour. And just one last super chat from Saul Goodman. Twitter says, "Night, everyone. Thanks, Eric and Tom. Be safe." Everyone, we'll see you very soon. Thank you so much for a great season one, season two, and now we're starting season three. We'll see you next time right here on Music Gear Network Inside Gilverse. Cheers. Thanks again for tuning in to Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. Be sure to check back each week for more great discussions and interviews with cast and crew from Breaking Bad El Camino and Better Call Saul. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends.